This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. Today, you join me, your host, Francie, and Kyle, who you know very well, to talk about the model year 2024 Ford Mustang Mach-E that is just huge improvements this year. Right, Kyle? So we're going to walk you through the technical specs, what they've commented on that they're most proud of, how they're achieving these new performance standards, and let you know what we think which is already, Kyle, you've told me you're you're pretty happy to see the changes so far. Yeah, Maki -E and Out of Spec has had a long relationship together. We've done a lot with this car, uh, driving it from the very early days, driving it across the country, um, testing plug-in charge. This was one of the first ever vehicles to support plug-in charge on our public charging networks. And uh, well, now finally it gets a much needed upgrade and I'm seriously pleased with everything they've seemed to do. A lot of it still will require testing. We have to run it through everything, but it's looking pretty damn good for model year 24 for the Mach-E. And I know that we're going to go internally and talk about like what these new achievements are for the technology of the car, like this performance, but externally, it seems like there's not many changes. It's going to look like the typical traditional Mach-E. Right. The only big external change is there's a new trim level called the Mach-E Rally that we've filmed on before and we've seen it shows that's now officially available. Um, but under the hood is, you know, it's, it's more range, it's faster charging, which is the big one for me. It's more power upgraded, uh, features as standard equipment, such as Magna ride or their magnetic ride control is now standard equipment on the GT, which is great. So we're basically going to run through the media release. They gave wrap it up with our thoughts. And then of course, I can't wait to drive this thing. Yeah, I'm I'm excited that you know they're saying they're leveling it up and we agree because sometimes automakers are like this is amazing what we're doing and we're like mm -hmm. well is it but this seems to be like some really needed improvements that they're achieving here. So yeah, let's start walking it through. Do you want to start with the tech specs? Do you want to start with what the team is saying? Where do you want to begin, Kyle? Yeah, I'm going to share my screen here, which is the official Ford media page. It just all of this information just went live uh, moments ago. Uh, yes. Donna Dickinson, or excuse me, Donna Dixon's been on our channel before, I think, when I did the Maki -E GT launch, uh, but she's great. So she's the chief engineer of Mustang Maki. -E. She mm -hmm. understands, you know, of course, she's a hardcore driver. She rips. And um, yeah, she's, she's just awesome. And nice. uh, so she's the chief engineer of Maki. -E. So she wrote this letter to the media, uh, and I figured we would share it with you as well. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to read it word for word, but I'm just going to pick out highlights here. So, you know, model year 24 was probably the planned mid-cycle update from a technical perspective of the vehicle. Uh, she says they spend a lot of time thinking about what will excite their customers so they can build EVs that their customers will truly love. And you guys know we're big F-150 Lightning fans. We like the Mach-E, but it's just needed some improvements. And these may have been the improvements that it's needed. By the way, just mm -hmm. to the viewers listening, it's now faster than a Tesla Model Y performance, which is yeah. not slow. No, so. not slow at all. They say it's faster than both the Tesla Model Y and the Porsche Macan 4 Electric. But, but that's the base Macan. Yes, the base. Yeah. So okay. Well, they just they just wanted to put it's faster than Porsche it in. in there. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> and it is. That's fine. But you know, Porsche always goes pretty slow on the base model electrics. We've learned. Mm -hmm. And that's specifically um, zero to sixty in three point three seconds. By the way, that's the right. stat that they're giving. Right. And and knowing Ford, it'll probably do a bit better than that. We're talking low threes for sure. Um, fun. Fun. Yep. So we'll have basically the part that I'm most excited about is this improved range, improved charging, but then also improved sort of dirt road or soft road capability. And you can see here, here are the stats on the acceleration. Uh, and that was with the rally, by the way. So this is 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds, faster than Tesla Y performance and the Porsche Macan 4. Uh, it cranks out the quarter mile 11.8 at 114 miles an hour. Look, we're not talking like plaid speed, but we're talking like a high 50,000, mid $50,000 electric, you know, mom car that's ripping 11s in the quarter right. mile. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. I see these all around the city. Also everywhere. I think these are a popular EV 
And they have this capability too, which I don't think most people I see driving them use it quite like <laughs> they could. <laughs> yeah, most Machis that I actually see around here, I see a very high market share of GTs, the fast ones. I always see them mm -hmm. driving reasonably, of course, but like I have a lot of friends that own Mustang Machi GTs. And yeah, they just use them as their daily car. And it's just nice to have the performance in the back pocket. So mm -hmm. again, not. All of the improvements are just for GT. It extends to the other trim, but we're just starting with acceleration, which is GT with performance upgrade is the top right. spec now. Uh, that gives you significantly more power. And the performance upgrade gives you 100 pound-feet of torque, uh, and it's only it's less than $1,000. Mm, so like, good, why, yeah. even, why even offer the non-performance upgrade? Well, yeah, because it comes standard with the Rally Edition, but then you can upgrade it on other ones. So... I mean, what do you think? Would you go for the just get the rally or the mock mock yeah, EGT? For me, with I would the... I would only okay. get the rally. That's cool. But we'll get to that in a moment. I, I think the big news here is this is the first time we're hearing of a uh the performance upgrade, which is the package, combines innovative powertrain thermal modeling and control algorithms. A lot of you will remember that on the previous generation Mach E, the first generation, it had uh, dare I say, terrible thermal management controls and logic. I mean, it would overheat almost near instantaneously and then just keep you in turtle mode for the entire drive, like up a canyon or something. It was, even the base cars were pretty bad. And a lot of that was just like preemptive safety because they didn't temperature model everything or temperature control everything. And it, it was just annoying. And for me, it was a non-starter on the vehicle. Don't sell a performance vehicle, especially a performance Mustang that doesn't have the thermal longevity to rip or at least keep up with Model Y. They're not saying how much improved thermal longevity here, but they are making a note because everyone made fun of the five-second power limit and all of these things that, that it had. They are making a note saying, hey, we've heard you, and we have new powertrain thermal modeling and control algorithms. This is music to my ears. I really can't wait to try this out uh, and experience this. So that's great. The second thing, is they have a new in-house electric motor, uh, which helps to deliver improved torque and possibly efficiency. I'm not sure. They did not go into detail on the new motor. Um, no. My understanding was that they produced, at least I thought, I could be wrong, but based on my memory, I thought they produced the primary axle motor in-house and then the secondary motor was uh, outsourced from a third-party uh, supplier. Perhaps it's all in-house motors now, or perhaps it's just one motor and they're just putting them on each axle. I believe they're dual permanent magnet. Uh, we'll have to see what the strategy is here. Hopefully they have a little media launch program. Maybe we can get Donna on the podcast, ask her all these things. It'd be great to chat with her about the improvements because it's like everything that I kind of had an issue with on Mach-E is like being fixed here with the update. So I'm, I'm really excited because I've wanted to recommend this car to my friends for so long. And I have friends who own them who never run into the issues that I run into driving aggressively or charging fast or doing things uh, mm -hmm. because they just drive it as like a daily car. But I still think it's important that you buy a fully engineered package uh, that's competitive and it looks like this is what's happening now. There's a little video which we played for you at the beginning of this episode. Um, and the performance upgrade comes standard on the Maki -E Rally, which you had already mentioned, Francie. So that's great. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, one thing that I, ooh. of course, what? What do oh, you sorry. say? I'm just reading. You. Uh, with this all just launched, so we're reading for the first time. The performance upgrade has nothing hardware related to it. It is just a software package on the vehicle. So you can mm -hmm. buy a Maki -E GT, and then if it's on the lot and you're like perfect spec, but I wish it had the performance upgrade or you're like, I'm running into issues. I want more power and more thermal longevity. I don't know. Perhaps we'll have to look. Uh, it seems like it's just a software enable over the air situation. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Don't I you like think? That. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> enable it seamlessly at a later date is what they say, which is what everyone wants to hear. Like with the more capabilities to be able to access offerings via software, instead of an entire different vehicle built differently with different hardware. That's a yeah, big I mean, one. That's, it's nothing new. I mean, Tesla has been upgrading performance through over the air for a while, but yes. it is cool to see Ford kind of catching on. Uh, also, I think it, which is really interesting to me are the hardware upgrades. Now are um, 
now our standard for the GT, every GT, which is like, I would always say, if you're going to get a Mach-E GT, get the performance upgrade because you get the better suspension, brakes, a little bit more power, all these things. Now you get the awesome seats, which are truly awesome. I love the GT performance seats. They feel special. They look great. So that's standard on GT. You get the Magna Ride, which is awesome. And the Brembo branded front brake calipers, which I'm not sure are upgraded over the regular GT and just say Brembo and the other ones don't, but they are, I've never really had an issue with the braking package on Maki GT. It never gave me enough power to really use the brakes. So now, you know, we might be pushing the limits down the line, which is great. So I'm very excited. It just seems like the GT is awesome. Mm -hmm. And interesting, it's a new rear e-motor developed mm -hmm. in-house by Ford engineers that debuts on all trim levels of the new Mach-E weighs less and helps deliver improved torque across the 2024 lineup. So the new motor is their primary axle that they've redone. So the primary electric motor is redone, which is awesome. And mm -hmm. we have to say the previous Mach-E, I never had an issue with the power output. I never had it, just how long it could give it to me for. And I certainly never had an issue with the range. The Mach-E always has had great range um hmm. and it's perhaps you know definitely more efficient now partially because of this yeah. uh motor so that's great that is what they go on to say is that thanks to the new e-motor along with other tweaks and improvements we've increased the range of the vehicle compared to the first model year of mustang maki in 2021 right that's awesome I, and i don't know if they're using a different battery there's no indication it just seems like they might be pushing it harder um, because here they have a note on charging, and it says here that it charges almost 20% faster, which is a huge improvement. 20% is a lot. When you add up yeah. all the times you're fast charging on a road trip, that's really good. And Do it, you remember uh, enables, go ahead. the last specs for the battery in the previous model years? Yeah, so there have been like two... Uh, so in the history of mach -E, they started with, I want to say, 88 kilowatt hour usable. I think it was... Okay. 99 gross, 88 usable. They had a huge buffer. And then okay. there was a software upgrade that opened it up to 91 kilowatt hour usable. This is just going okay. off memory, so forgive me if I'm wrong. Uh, 91 kilowatt hour usable, and they upped the charging curve a bit. At you Previously, on the first iteration, I'm just talking big battery Mach-E. I've never tested the small battery, actually. But on big mm. battery Mach-E, I had uh, remembered at 80%, it would dip to like 12 kilowatts. It would just be mm. like, it would take like hours to complete. Mm. Then Not they good. moved that to 90%. So at 80%, it dipped to like 40 or 50 kilowatts. Okay. And so the time to 80% was about an hour from Oof. zero to 80. Now they're talking 10 to 80, but zero to 80 was pretty much an hour. And it was like another hour and a half from 80 to 100. Oh so remember goodness. it being two and a half hours, zero to full on Maki, -E, which That's... the top 20% doesn't matter. But no, it might if you're in the middle of nowhere. Yes. So it sounds like the 10 to 80 in 36.2 minutes is it's they say 8.8 .8 minutes faster than previous models. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing that uh, for the big battery, it's still 91 kilowatt hours and the small battery is 72 kilowatt hours based on yeah. the spec sheet that we got. So the batteries them. are the same usable. Man, small battery is still fine. You probably don't need more than that. Yeah, uh, I see a lot of them around here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'd never tested. I'd like to test a small battery Maki uh, because the price point on that, we'll get to it in a bit, is really solid price point on this mm -hmm. vehicle. Mm -hmm. So you get basically faster charging. We'll run all the test logs and stuff. I don't know if they're still doing their boost profile, the initial plug-in where they rip. I, I don't know how that's all going to work, but we'll test it when we can. Um, but at least in the EPA estimated range, you get 20 miles more over the previous car. So it's now 320 miles of range, which if you think about what I did, I had a Maki -E extended range rear drive and I drove that like 314 miles. This is the early car over the Rocky mountains. And I still had plenty of range left. Very cool. Love so that. this is going to be a good cruiser. Now I should mention on the charging performance, when you compare that 10 to 80% time to vehicles like Ionic 5, which is a direct competitor, we are not even in the same category. That Ionic 5 can charge in half the time this vehicle can up to 80%. And I still wish, of course, for very fast charging. I think this could have mm -hmm. been Ford's opportunity to say, yeah, I'm glad it's improved. It's now seemingly acceptable. Before, it was just a bit too slow. Now, it seems seemingly mm -hmm. acceptable, but 
the, the competition went even better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the competition tw- is just in another league. Because twenty percent faster uh, charge time, that sounds good. But then when you look at the numbers, <laughs> it, it's still not that fast. You know, it went down to still thirty six, ten to eighty percent, which is of course more perfect conditions that you can get, good charger, everything. So. Yeah, I'm just Good curious what they did to improve that, whether they're just holding boosts longer or if they're actually upping the peak mm-hmm. charging speeds. I'm not sure. We're going to obviously play around with it. But what I think is um, most interesting or most useful about this is I know a lot of people that just bought mach because the price was good. They had a local Ford dealer and they hate Tesla, whatever reason. I don't know. I just <laughs> know like three or four people that did that. And they go on the occasional trip. And DC charging isn't like top of mind. It's not the most important metric to them like it is to me, but to most people, it's a very infrequent use. And so here, the people that do buy mach are just going to have a better experience while charging for the few times throughout their ownership that they do that. That's true. Yeah, good point. So no no complaints from me. Uh, and, and honestly, I don't see mach owners. I, I definitely see a small group of enthusiasts, but I don't see at large mach owners really complaining about charging speeds. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're always going to push it here because I think it's important, but owners ne- don't necessarily, we've already covered that they're open to the supercharger network, which is great. Um, we should just take a look at Maki. Did they move the charge port location? Still looks like front left. So no, it mm-hmm. is the Still same charge that. port location and they have a cool bold and bronze Maki GT bronze appearance package. This car looks awesome. By the way, when you look at this, let's just see if I can pull it up. Look how sick this thing is. That does look very nice. It's like, Perfect color combination. Truly. It's amazing. Love that. So that's cool. But then here's the one for Colorado. It's the Maki <laughs> rally. It's got the coolest wheels. It's got the big powertrain. slight different suspension stuff. You can see it's 20 millimeters higher. Um, mm. It's actually 260 miles of EPA. I believe not 250. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, what does it say? If I come here. Uh, Maki rally 265 miles of range. So again, mm-hmm. Ford always doing the under promise, always deliver or over deliver situation here with model year 24. That's the Maki rally is so cool. I can't wait to drive that. That's like built for me. That's awesome. And it's not like a hardcore off roader. I just hope they made it so you can slide it and drift it and have some fun. Um, mm-hmm. Because I'll just share a quick note on the Maki GT uh, vehicles. They were always front motor heavy. So what I mean is whenever you launch it, you spin the front tires, which is like, just put a juicier rear motor on it. Perhaps this is that new motor. And so it keeps Mm -hmm. the same front motor, but then the rear can do a bit more to help balance that drivetrain out because it was always a bit front wheel driving. It's got Mm -hmm. blue cruise with the lane changes, 1.2, 1.3. We tested that. It performed, I don't want to say flawlessly, but almost flawlessly in our hogback test. It was either number one or number two. It was great driver assistance. Uh, we had it in the F-150 Lightning, an earlier version. mach comes with a later version. It was great. So they're really working on a good, complete vehicle. And here's mm-hmm. the lineup. So you have Select, Premium, GT, and Rally. And the Rally is under 60 grand, comes with everything. The select is under forty grand, thirty nine nine ninety five for standard range rear drive, and that seems like a great offering. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or up it to the extended range all wheel drive for forty seven thousand for the select. But yes, at that point, a lot of money though. It is no, of course it is, and I think at that point, like you could be accessing the premium trim too. So okay, I'm now Kyle's brought up at, the Model Y. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm looking at Model Y prices because it's a direct comparable pricing situation. Yes. It's $44,990 for a rear drive Y. This is the small battery, too. It's a software locked large pack, is my understanding. Okay. And the comparable $49,90 for Model Y long range all wheel drive. If I come here to the Mach E, we're at Forty nine nine ninety five, same price, but this is the nicer Mach E. This comes with more stuff, big battery, all wheel drive. This is like the nice one, is where the Model Y kind of starts out at. Interesting in the all wheel drive form. And I'd love to see this price competition. It's five thousand dollars cheaper base price than a Model Y right now. Now keep in mind, Tesla is heavily discounting inventory vehicles, so we have to they mention are. that. You're not going to go and order one of these fresh from the website. You're going to buy an inventory one for a few thousand less. But mm-hmm. if you're looking at MSRP to MSRP, which is truly the only way we can actually compare the vehicles, 
um, without doing uh, you know a, a serious deep dive. The Mach E's five grand less base price, and all wheel drive is about three grand less. Keep but it this up. is the one to get. Get the premium. You want the nice stuff, I think. Blue Cruise, all the other things. So you're, you're in the mm-hmm. yeah. But then it's only like four grand more to get the GT. We could just keep upping it. Yeah. And then <laughs> it's only so a bit more. The rally. <laughs> <laughs> just throw it up to $60,000 for the Mustang, Mach E Rally, extended range battery, all wheel drive. That should be, be the able only to one they sell. Yeah. You think so? I mean, no, but for no. yes. <laughs> Just as we were saying, because mostly I see these in, I mean, who knows where people take them out once they're not in their driveways or garages, but I typically see them in like with families or, yeah. you know, not, not the, not the racers, not the. Yeah, totally. Rows. So it just seems like a really nice portfolio. I think they've nailed the pricing. You can go pretty inexpensive for what you're getting on the low end, all the way up to a really fun rally version with you know bespoke suspension, wheels, lighting, uh, probably some cool software stuff would be my guess. Some drift modes, I hope things like that would be really fun. And so basically, that is the the Maki lineup for you guys. Uh, Francie, your cool. thoughts. I did a lot of talking this episode. Did we miss any of the upgrades? Um, I don't, I I'm not sure if we, it. yeah, I think we were pretty thorough. I'm wondering when, so it looks like you can build your own right now. Do we know when these will be available? I don't know. Ford has definitely delayed the model year 24 stuff because we're already into April of 24. So Mm -hmm. they must have had some last minute engineering or budget stuff, or I'm not sure what happened there because lightning still hasn't announced 24 true specs yet. Mm -hmm. So I assume we'll hear about lightning very soon as well, but, um, yeah, well, right. we'll, we'll of course, sure stay on top of this. As soon as we see them starting to get delivered, we'll mention it. You know, Patrick and Liv from the mach vlog is a channel you probably want to keep your eyes close to during this time of model Definitely. year changeover and refresh. They, of course, will be covering this closely. And um, they're, they're mach enthusiasts, so we always turn to them when we have questions about what was this? What's that? What do you think is going to happen? And uh, props to Ford, I think, for dialing in the car as you know, initial impression from the outside looking in. It sounds like they watched an out of spec video and said, "Oh, let's just fix these things, and then it'll be good." Definitely. I mean, it seems like nothing's perfect, right? We'd love to see even more impressive numbers because we want to keep our standards high, especially for EVs. But this is already a pretty popular electric vehicle, just from my anecdotal experience. But the numbers say so too. Ford, uh, Ford's approach in general does seem to be a competitive one. And they're working closely with the best automaker, Tesla. I mean, they were the first one on the supercharger network. So in general, are you, do, you, do we like where Ford is going electrically, Kyle? Yeah, you know, there's been a lot of news that they're slowing down, whatever. I don't think it's that big of a deal. They'll come out when they come out. And when they come out, they better be competitive at that time. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm in no rush. Uh, I just think make a real solid product. Mm-hmm. The uh, the Mach E now seems good. I mean, I I'm excited about it. What the real question is this Ionic Five Model Y? We got to do the big comparison tests, which we will do, of course, uh, mm-hmm. probably towards the end of this year once everyone's had their model year upgrades. Because Ionic Five is also getting updates, and Model Y could be getting an update here pretty soon as well uh, to keep in the back of your head. So we have we will do the big electric SUV comparison either late mm-hmm. this year or early next, but. I got to say, love the direction they're going. They're totally on it. They listen to customer feedback. They listen to our feedback. They Mm -hmm. are, Ford is one of my favorite automakers because they have such a large portfolio of enthusiast vehicles. So, but if we're just looking at Mach-E, this now seems like it was a pretty weak offering in my opinion before. It now seems pretty solid. That's good. And that's what they need to do if we don't want to, see any more headlines of them divesting or delaying their electric plants. They need to have a really solid electric lineup to be competitive, competitive offerings, not only, you know, prices, but what you're getting for your value. And I know in my area, we've got the Blue Oval uh, factory, Blue Oval campus, I my Blue Oval plant, either way. And yeah. there's all this question in our region too is like, okay, if Ford is divesting from this, what is going to happen to this big giant campus that they're building out in Tennessee? So something to keep an eye on. Uh, but I think this is definitely key if they're going to remain a strong contender in the EV space. So thanks for walking us through all of Ford's electric love for their new model year 24 Mustang Mach-E, Kyle. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Let us know what you think about 
this upgrade. If you're interested, does this change your idea on the Mach-E if you were interested? But there are, like Kyle said, some other competitive offerings out there. So we'll, like he said, keep our finger on the pulse and keep you updated. See you next time on the next episode. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye, y'all. <laughs>